Um, after the first operation, it was a really seamless time. Um, little to no pain. I think the worst, worst extent of it was just the actual local anesthesia. But after that was done, it was smooth sailing. I went to bed that night and slept probably better than I had the entire trip I had out here. Yeah, it was a very seamless sort of transition. I had no issues uh, during my recovery period. Yeah, no complaints whatsoever. It was very, from start to finish, it was fantastic experience, which is part of the reason why I'm back for my second, so. Confident, excited. I was really, really happy. It was, it felt like I made the right decision. Coming out here and kind of putting myself, you know, to an extent, uh, in a new new country and new experience altogether. Um, it was well worth it, 100%, so. Everybody was shocked, absolutely shocked. At first, for the most part, they, uh, they were like, I feel like something's different about you, but I can't quite understand what exactly is different. And then after I finally explained that I had a transplant, they were like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And ever since then, it's been kind of a, a thing at first I was a little not comfortable talking about. Uh, getting a hair transplant, but kind of after the results have shown through, I'm ecstatic to say that I've had a hair transplant just because of how proud I am of the results overall. He's a lot more confident. Uh, I think he's more relaxed, more himself. Uh, doesn't worry too much about his hair. He still wears his hats, but I think it's more of a, uh, he likes clothing. So it's more of a, an accessory and how he looks, but I think he looks and feels much better. Well, one, I was kind of surprised. Uh, it was actually, my wife was talking to somebody when she was visiting me, because I'm in Arizona for work. And she came over and was visiting and we were in line with another uh, couple guys that were coming over here to Turkey. And that's what really prompted the initial information flow so then he was gonna show it on his Instagram. So she got information from that. And then uh, was just had a dialogue with him and then related to Bryce, who then reached out and got more information. And uh, it was really kind of fast pace on the information flow going back and forth, which is great. Uh, for me, it was more of a kind of a last minute decision as in, you know, I just need to, if he's gonna do it, you know, he doesn't need, he because he came over alone the last time. So now we kind of made it a little bit more of a family affair. Uh, came over and I was like, yeah, you know, I just as well, I need to have this done as well, but not so much for, I'm confident, I don't care about my hair too much. I just don't want to get sunburnt. I want to get skin cancer, right? I just want the protection. You know, or like, you know, or like, we're gonna do it together, more of a, a brotherhood kind of thing, right? So that's good. I mean, definitely during the, I guess the two to four month stage and period, I was a little worried with as much uh, fallout as I was having, but after, I think it was probably right at a little past four months, I started to really see some massive growth. Um, and that's kind of, you know, subsided all those worries during the ugly duckling stage. Um, so yeah, no, no fears whatsoever. I was very, very pleased from start to finish, like I said. Any little questions I had, I think I really, the first three months I had some questions and I would text the WhatsApp number that I had and they would get answered as quickly as possible. And it was a very, very easy, um, easy way to kind of get a situation or problem fixed if there was a problem, but there was, like I said, there was no issues whatsoever um, during recovery, so. You know, I don't necessarily want to go through the phase of losing all my hair and kind of going through the healing process, but you know, it's part of the process, right? So it's like any operation. You have an operation, you got to have a recovery period, right? Uh, so you don't notice the full results for, you know, six weeks to six months, right, to a year. Me, it'll probably be a little bit quicker because I keep my hair so short. Uh, and but uh, any questions I had, Bryce has answered. You know, I kind of get I get the first hand uh, knowledge. You know, when I get to ask him the questions, and I probably ask him more questions than I do need to hear because he's answered them all. So as a ballet dancer. Um, Losing your hair is kind of like losing your identity in a lot of ways. Um, we have roles we have to portray and, um, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of bald princes out there. So having 
having lost my hair was kind of a, a big defeat uh, mentally and confidence wise and um, which is part of the reason why I was like I gotta I gotta fix this plus I was losing my hair at 20 so um, it was kind of a, a hard pill to swallow nevertheless so yeah it's definitely tough losing my hair early in age and even with the occupation that I have so well I wanted it fully finished. Um, I really wanted to get my crown touched on, which was when I initially came, uh, my doctor told me that I have a massive head, um, and even with the amount of grafts that we were able to extract, it wasn't, um, it might have not been enough to cover, get the full coverage that I was wanting, so I, uh, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just plan for a second, um, second visit. So that's where I'm here uh, now to finish off the crown in kind of the middle of my head. Um, so yeah, we'll be fully confident after that. Hello, dear followers and patients. Uh, I'm Dr. Ahmed, a hair transfer surgeon from Smart Hair Clinic. Uh, today we're gonna do a evaluation of, the, of one of our patients who had the, his first surgery around one year ago, back in, two, in June of 2022. The patient name is Bryce. He is the gentleman in his like late twenties and early thirties, actually. Okay. Uh, when he came to the clinic, he had the normal type five to normal type six of the hair loss. What it basically means is it actually means the loss of the continuity of the front hairline, open area in the front side, mid scalp, and the crown area. So basically, all three anatomic areas were affected by hair loss. It's actually a progressive uh, stage of the hair loss. For this type of patients, on average, we may need something between four to six thousand grafts to cover all the open areas. Of course, the number of the grafts may change depending on the size of the open area, uh, the density you want to get, the patient's expectations. Uh, but the most important criteria here is the capacity of the donor area to give a sufficient number of the grafts. From the beginning, we planned a two-step surgery for Bryce's case uh, because, you know, uh, most of the time for the patients with a norwood type 4 to norwood type 5, starting from this uh, range actually, most of the time we may require the second surgery to give a more dense and the coverage. Uh, from the beginning we planned the same with the Bryce. With the first surgery we were planning to rebuild the front hairline, cover the front side and the mid scalp. And with the second surgery, cover the rest of the mid scalp and the crown area. So it was a kind of a two-step approach, like with the first surgery be uh, like uh, covering the front and the mid and the second one, the mid and the crown area. Uh, with the first surgeon, he had the mega session with 4,750 grafts. We were able to cover the front and the front side and the mid scalp with the, an average dance of around uh, 40 to 50 grafts per centimeter square. In the very front line, it was around like uh, 60 grafts per centimeter square. So uh, the distribution was made according to the open areas and the planning of the surgery. All right, here we are, ready to get into it. Time to change this up. <laughs> 